Hi, welcome to this uh, video and this is going to be a very different video than what I've done before but I felt drawn to do this video because um, I'm a great fan of cards again okay? <clears throat> now obviously there's all sorts of cards around um, and this is just a selection of cards that I actually use I would say relatively um, often okay um i mean you know with with different cards and such like with involved with sort of psychological side of our lives the mental health side of our lives lives can actually be inspiring and and give um con it, 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 is it confirmation affirmations you know sometimes gives us clarity in our normal day lives okay sometimes we just need to hear something positive in order to feel good f you know for the day right um, and I've got a cross-section here of all sorts of stuff that I've picked up over the years um, I might one or two of these I will go into sort of greater detail because these cards are sometimes prompt cards different ways of thinking you know i mean this one am i normal you know which is quite an interesting deck of cards this one is also really really good this is kind of you know affirmations and help you know a deck that sort of helps you to um think slightly differently more positive ways about things because sometimes you know when we're sort of going through life especially if we haven't really got anyone to talk to that we can um pass things on to you know not everyone in life has got really close friends that they can talk to right and and, and I've come across people that that can't even talk to their partner about certain things you know um, family that you know friends and such like and sometimes you don't want to talk about certain things with people because you feel insecure you know very self-conscious about it um, embarrassed you know uh so yeah i'm just going to go through these today as i say this is going to be a very different video but it may or may not inspire others out there to think about using things like cards you know for learning for inspiration for problem solving for just having a dis different perspective um on your situation difficulties your life your opinions whatever it may be sometimes we just need a bit of a helping hand in maybe understanding something okay um so i'm gonna take out some of these right so i'm gonna take out these four because they've got different uses these particular cards i've had for quite a number of years when i when i first started on my journey of psychotherapy mainly around the nlp side of things there was uh well there is still um a guy called jamie smart right big fan of jamie love his videos love his books i bought his hypnosis um dvd set i mean we're talking quite quite a number of years ago now and he produced these cards which i find invaluable now these you can't get hold of anymore unfortunately <laughs> but and i think i got all of them uh the one the one i think one of the very first ones i ever got was this deck okay this is the ericksonian hypnosis cards okay now i don't know whether you, you're going to be able to read these but basically what these cards do and they're 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 kind of modeled on a normal playing deck okay um because why change something when you know it's already there and it works and people are familiar with it so they're split up into four different suits um and they do slightly different language patterns and such like that obviously are based around um milton erickson's um language patterns okay now these are actually really really good because you can just take out a couple of these per day and and learn these language patterns and they've helped me a lot with my um hypnosis you know 
uh, language patterns specifically but obviously in NLP because obviously Jamie Smart Smart is also a lot of his work is based around the NLP um, modeling uh, these work really really well so you know if that's something that you're you want to learn and I find these I have always found cards to be fun to work with yeah, I mean, I've got enough books. I've got a massive library of books. Um, I think it's over 400 books now, the majority of which are sort of psychological and mind and such like. Uh, but yeah, books are OK. Cards are a lot more fun, in my opinion. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the, these are excellent. These are excellent. Um, so you've got the Ericksonian hypnosis cards and the other the other decks that he produced um, we've got the instant happiness cards which I think again changed were, were very useful for um, changing the way these were sort of uh, something that you you um, did in the morning let's say to to set the day you know the tone for the day would be to sort of shuffle these up and pick out maybe a, a couple of these um you know and these kind of gave you your positive affirmations and your gave you that sort of instant happiness feeling which was actually really really good so for instance it says today is your day uh, today will never come again and it's your day to do with as you wish stop for a moment take a couple of deep breaths and realize that as you sit here reading this you are a unique individual occupying a unique space at a time in history that will never be repeated some people lose their day to others by perceiving themselves as victims but you can realize that these are choices you don't have to do anything if there's something you've been thinking you had to do you can restate it as i choose to do x because i want y it's your choice and it always has been don't let anyone or anything take your day from you so the, you know this whole deck here uh, is full of these kind of things which are just very thought-provoking and and just you know help you to just rewire your thinking maybe you're in a bad place at the moment you're feeling a bit down you know you feel like you're not getting anywhere um you know you may f be feeling sort of insecure or maybe your confidence levels are not particularly good or you know and and that's where these cards come in so they you know that i found these to be really really useful i had to be honest with you I haven't really used these an awful lot because I tend to be actually a predominantly a happy person most of the time anyway. So I haven't had to sort of go back to these and use them very often. But I have used them myself in the past, um, which has been quite useful. These are also really, really good. Now, these are the NLP coaching cards. Now, if anyone is studying NLP, um, you know, these are actually really, really good at... Um, sort of helping you learn all the NLP, NLP methods, processes, you know, um, and such like, you know, and, and terminologies and wording and phrases and such like that we use, you know, from the NLP system um, of psychotherapy to help clients okay so it's just the way things are worded help people to kind of go internal and think about what it is you've just said and it then gets a response or it makes that shift you know it's that 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 difference that makes the difference so you know like this one here you know how would you know if that wasn't true see it says beliefs aren't really true they're just ideas this is just a great way of challenging limiting beliefs because the person has to imagine a new belief to answer the question. I lost that deal. I'll never be successful. How would you know 
if that wasn't true. The first step to establishing a new belief is getting someone to think of it. I'll always be struggling because life is hard. How would you know if that wasn't true? When they start to imagine the new belief, the door is open to sweep out the old one. So, you know, again, all of these um, building blocks and language patterns and questions and um, the way that we sort of elicit responses and the way we get clients to think about things in a different way. This very good deck, very good deck. Now, the, fa the last one, um, which is also really, really good. Well, they're all good. They're, they're all excellent. I mean, it's, it's a shame that they're just not produced anymore. Um, so this one is actually to do with money. OK, so this one, this deck, Financial Detox, helps people to think slightly different uh, to their financial situation and their thoughts about money, making money, you know, and such like managing money. So again, with it, with each deck, they sort of he he sort of suggested a way of using these in a kind of fun way to to work through, you know, either singly or or with a group of people. Um, again, they get you to think differently about things. So you know, again, similar kind of format. Um, you see, I mean, this this you know, these touch on an awful lot of other things that we come across in life you know the law of manifestation telling ourselves certain things all the time manifests that thought so you know here's a card that i've just come across whatever you focus on increases so whatever you focus your attention on increases over time people turn small credit card debts into large debts by focusing thinking about the debt while feeling a strong emotion you usually worry to increase what you do want, imagine having the wealth you desire and feel the way you'll feel when you already have it. If you're not sure what you've been focusing on, look around. Whatever's been showing up in your life over time is what you've been focusing your attention on. Have you been focusing on wealth or lack? Focus on what you want and you'll change your life. So how in any asks very often these cards have got questions. How can I continue to focus even more on my increasing wealth? So, you know, there, there are crossovers with these cards. I mean, you know, they're, they're, these are obviously the um, financial cards, the financial detox cards. But you could apply that to pretty much anything in your life, you know. Um, be persistent. Courage becomes confidence. It's not how much you earn, it's how much you keep. It's okay to want what you want. You know, again, these cross over onto affirmations, law of attraction, manifestation, you know, belief systems, change of belief systems and such like. Changing the way we think about things and the way we, you know, the things that we believe uh, to make change in our life. So these are actually really, really good. And these, I, I've always got all these cards to hand. In fact, I've got two of these, this set, and I carry these cards around because I just, you know, the Ericksonian hypnosis cards, because I just take them out a couple of day, you know, some days I miss, obviously, but, you know, every now and then when I feel like I need to learn, a, you know, something else, then I shall take these out. They act as a reminder confirmation that you may already know a language pattern you know they're 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 good they're good for things like that okay let's move on to different cards now these cards are in a different class really um i mean they they do different things but along the same lines ap apart from this one and if anyone knows what these cards are then uh you know <laughs> you'll know you'll know the patterns on the back but anyway so self mastery cards these are actually really good um i've only got these recently but i've had cards that are very very similar to these um these are quite old now but the idea of these cards is much the same 
as uh, a couple of the other cards in in as much as you can just take them out in the morning you know pick a couple of these and now these are sort of affirmation type cards and again they they do get you to think about things so the idea is you know you would shuffle them up probably spread them out a little bit and you would pick you know a couple of these cards so let me just pick a couple of them randomly the only thing i don't like about these cards is trying to read them the, whoever designed these designed bold italic um font a serif font on a noisy background which is a little bit difficult to read but anyway i mean we've picked up cheerfulness and simplicity so it says keeping a constant internal smile knowing how amazing everything is and that it's all perfectly okay as a master i enjoy the paradoxes i am i am easygoing about whatever happens i don't get angry anymore so again you know useful affirmation type thing simplicity i become free from all the trappings and supports of false pride i keep it simple to stay free to stay close to what is real unencumbered I remain free as a master. You know, it, it, they're good. They're good. Um, I've come across some people who, who find it difficult to um, read these kind of things and, and to sort of ponder on them and think about them and, and possibly just, you know, keep something like this with you all day and pull it out every now and then just uh, throughout the day especially if you're very experiencing difficulties or having a bit of a troubling time to keep reminding yourself of this um, I generally tend to find people who don't believe that these things can do anything um, have obviously got a limiting belief <laughs> somewhere along the line uh that you know something as simple as some cards with some affirmations on can actually make a difference they do make a difference um and they are they are really really good so the these this deck is actually really quite good self mastery um this was a very interesting deck i came across um i think a couple of years ago now and am i normal okay now this has so many applications because where this deck comes from is that it's it's trying to um on each card they're trying to um give people a, an indication that what they are feeling possibly what they are thinking and what they are doing is actually normal right that that actually they don't you know you're you, although each person is unique potentially the feelings that you're feeling and the difficulties you're going through and the perceptions that you have about yourself your life and everything around it actually are quite normal because there's literally billions of other people with the same thing now if if you if that makes a person feel better then i think that's a good thing and sometimes you go through this deck and you think wow you know see i suspect that strangers out in public have very critical thoughts about me you know that probably resonates with 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 people and that's actually normal you know if i were more courageous i'd leave my partner i know several people that that you know they felt like that they expressed that they had these kind of feelings again normal um i mean this one you know i've been alarmed at how easily i might proposition someone in the street you know um i'm far meaner than anyone thinks i mean you know again <laughs> these these things are uh you know like i have panic attacks again a lot of the psychotherapy type of things i find an awful lot of the time is just the admittance that you have these feelings that you know these feelings are actually really normal um i mean you know some of them are pretty realistic i'd quite like a relative of mine to die soon for the inheritance you know to have those kind of thoughts again 
is, you know, because we may think something and because we're sometimes quite isolated and we may not communicate these things to other people, we might start thinking that we're strange, that we're abnormal, that there's something wrong. You know, people might start thinking, well, that you know, there's something wrong with me if I start, you know, or like I'm scared of asking for directions or of walking into fancy shops, you know. Um, if somebody can relate to that, um, then that's half the battle, I find, a lot of the time with with easing up on yourself and stop beating yourself about your thoughts and, and thinking that you're an abnormal person, you know. Um, some of these go quite deep. Some of them are quite, um, you know, f fairly shallow, I would say, you know. Um, but I think a lot of them are real. They're real to people because then they begin to realize that actually, well, OK, I'm not alone in thinking something along these lines. You know, I'm not abnormal. Now, the next two, uh, I'm going to do them in kind of isolation, really. OK, so let's just put this deck over here the creative whack pack now this is an amazing deck it's basically if you don't know about uh, roger van oak's um uh, creative whack pack okay the idea of these is that they help people to shift the way they think about things and the way they look about you know the way they're viewing things in their life now a lot of these cards are actually um this deck here can be applied to an awful lot of things there's four suits to these and i actually created i mean based on the book that comes with it i created this whacker reading uh sheet that i have given out to people and it's kind of a good way of um just looking at something so if you've got a business problem for instance or you're trying to find a solution to something or you can't really understand why something is not working right and again you could apply this in a work environment business environment i wouldn't say you could go down the route i mean you could go down the route of a relationship environment um but i think they're basically created for people that are trying to solve business solutions or um you know if you're an artist or you're a you're a business person or you're managing a, a department or something or you're managing a project about something or you're building something or you're creating something you know whether it be a business or a, an idea for a business or something along those lines then what these cards do and using this reading here it kind of gives you an, an idea about the environment the mirror which which represents sort of sources within you you know things that you could be internally tapping into which you may not know about or think about slightly different you've got the shadow which you know represents the something that's possibly hidden from you or that you're hiding from yourself the environment obviously the external forces around um or issues that have a bearing on the concept that you've got and then we've got the caution card which is something that represents something to look out for um, what should you be aware of you know something that possibly internally or externally that you again hadn't thought about that's why it's called the creative whack pack because it kind of gives you a whack on the side of the head is the, is the tagline that went along with these cards i mean we, these cards were back in 1992 so you know they've been around for quite a long time um and then you've got the power card which is what you need to do to to get a positive outcome to whatever it is you're looking to you know for for inspiration about and what you really need to do now which is really really good um there are quite a few other things you can do with this uh deck as in you can do things um solo they're like games if you like that you can have in teams as well so you know because they're in four suits they represent four different aspects to something that you may uh 
and it it reminds me very much of this this deck here which we're going to talk about in a minute but um yeah these are really really good and again you know you can you can use these cards to sort of just shuffle through and and think well what do i need to know today how can i think about something slightly different and it could be absolutely random you 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 pick a card and you think you know and it says change viewpoints long ago a curious plague struck a village when effect afflicted its victims went into a death-like coma and most died within a day the problem was that the villagers couldn't tell if a victim was dead or alive after discovering that someone had been buried alive, an alarmed town council convened. The majority, hoping to save lives, voted to put food and water in every coffin. Another group proposed a cheaper solution. Implant a stake in every coffin lid directly over the victim's heart. When closed, all doubts about the victim's condition would vanish. What differentiated the solutions were the questions used to find them. Whereas the first group asked, what if we bury somebody alive? The second group asked, how can we make sure everyone we bury is dead? So yeah, change of viewpoint. And then again, these cards also have a question. You know, the second assault on the same problem should come from a totally different direction. How can you change your viewpoint? So again, you know, really, really useful way of um, shifting perspective shifting the way you think about something highlights things that possibly you haven't thought about or haven't really considered and i i again i've used these throughout my life you know throughout my career ever since i've had these uh on a on a regular basis you know i come back to these cards time and time again and they really do work they really do shift the way you think about something and you think oh my god i hadn't thought about that you know or isn't that a re that's a really good you know solution um you know that's a that's a different way of looking at something and it it's that difference that makes the difference it's the small change that can make a bigger change down the line um you know which is really good now i'm going to finish on this deck right and before everyone starts clicking away and leaving nasty comments this is a tarot deck i will never use tarot um in my psychotherapy practice um now the reason why i you know why tarot decks have been around for quite a long time um and the reason why people like tarot card readings is because the tarot deck is a reflection of life okay and now this is one of the reasons why carl jung actually used the deck and i've actually got his deck i mean he was a believer in the esoteric and the unknown as it were in in his psychotherapy practice and again you know believed like i do that we don't know everything about um, the effects of psychology and such like of someone's mind now the beauty with these these cards is that they're again they're in four suits but they represent from start to finish so a bit like the card deck that you normally get playing cards they go from the ace all the way up to uh, the king okay and this is a pathway all the way along and each deck represents certain things this represents you know financial matters earthly matters uh, work and career cups is all about emotional um, emotional things things that are fluid things that come and go um, and such like the symbolism in these in these cards are what Carl Jung was drawn to and also I am drawn to the the ones or the staffs is all about work passion growth um, and such like you know so again think think about think about this differently um the tarot has got um a rather hard uh you know people have got like hard and fast beliefs about what tarot is they link it to a cult and all of these other things which to be honest with you i think is a load of nonsense because they were never really designed for that kind of thing they they help people just like all the other cards that we've just gone, gone through they help people to figure things out 
okay they are part they are a, a reflection of an awful lot of stages in our life um, and things that we experience through life now to do with psychotherapy uh, the swords um, you know part of the the thing is all about the mind It's about mind and thought processes and such like going through and even I mean this is this is based on the the Rider Waite um, deck so these are the kind of the original designs and so if you just look at the imagery themselves I mean a heart with three swords through it I mean what does that invoke you know the emotions I mean you know a person sitting here with a blindfold on, on holding two swords what do you think that you know means um you know we've got the 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 four you know the four with somebody sort of lying down i mean what do you think that means i mean i know what all these cards mean but they sometimes they mean slightly different things they have an underlying meaning uh but of course the interpretation of them and 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 whatever the cards together again you know this this is about taking a break resting um, recuperation you've got the five of swords here I mean you've got this guy that's rather smug holding three out of the five swords and two people walking away you know he's got a rather smug smile on his face um, we've got the six you know we've got people turned away they're they're rowing away on you know on a boat I mean that's that's indicating a, a you know a journey a life journey walking away from something going to somewhere slightly different the seven of swords you know again if we if we keep focusing on the thought processes that go on all of these map out certain things i mean here we go there's there's a representation of of you know the um uh, the nine here of, of somebody who's entrapped who's bound themselves up they're blindfolded surrounded by an awful lot of thoughts going on um you know and then obviously moving on we've got the nine of swords we've got somebody holding their head in their hands um you know this card actually represents thought processes where you know people can't sleep at night they're thinking they're constantly worrying they're in a state of panic all the time you know representing a level well more anxiety and probably panic attacks rather than depression uh, but yeah you know and then obviously we've got the 10 I mean we've got 10 swords in the back of somebody who's appearing to be sort of dead on the on the, on the ground I mean again you know a representation of like and we see well this this is representing kind of the <laughs> pretty much the death or the end of something but doesn't always mean that you know it, it people have attributed hype to a lot of these cards unfortunately um uh, that that is unjust in a way really and then of course you know we've got the what they call the uh the page the knight the queen and the, and the king all of these actually represent various other stages and and um you know like this representing messages uh this one is an action card you know thought processes so you got a knight here running away you know running quite rapidly or galloping rapidly you know that's that's a really high action card in a different um sort of suit then then it would represent something else um you know and then we've got the authority figures here of the queen and the, and the, and the king so you know that's what these cards actually really represent and when you sometimes get stuck in life you can they the cards and i believe this is how carl jung used them so he would use these cards i believe to you know represent somebody who was potentially in a in a in a, a state of this let's say right so you know if we if we think logically that if somebody's in this particular state here you know you can almost see that if they stay in this state they're going to move on to this state because they move in that logical way um, and then would end up in this state which you know realistically is not a particularly good place to be but if somebody doesn't seek help when they're in here feeling like they're completely restrained and tied and surrounded by their thoughts which are actually really quite damaging they then get to this point which is you know the the next logical step as it were 
And then the next step after that, you know, we could be co coming to a complete and utter crisis where somebody has a, an, an utter mental breakdown or, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is you, you want to interpret these cards as. I think this is what Carl Jung, you know, and again, with the different suits, um, uh, you know, they represented, as I say, you know, various different things. Um, we have the passion and the action. You know, we've got the, the the cups, which are emotional. OK, so there's a representation of uh, the each emotional stage going on. Um, and then we've got, obviously, you know, the finances, the work, the earth, the home, you know, levels as well. So anyway, I've waffled enough that that's how I like using cards. I'm a cards person. Some people collect other things you know and use other things that prompt them and some people don't believe any of this they think it's all nonsense and that's that's all good you know that you can believe whatever you want really um so yeah that's how i use cards in pretty much my everyday work environment uh and with other people if they choose to you know sometimes you can just suggest something to somebody and just say well you know I've got this deck here. Why, why don't you pick a couple of cards out and see whether that helps shift the way you think about something or look at something, look at something in a slightly different way or behave in a slightly different way. You might get a different result. Um, all of these things are just tools to be used. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you again in another video soon.